the first thing that i want you to do is to make a list of all the negative things that you have heard about money from different places like wherever it may be from your parents from you know friends family like whatever now the reason i asked you to do this is because you see everything that you hear kind of has an impact on you so which is why it's like uh, so this is just to bring some awareness to kind of what has been impacting us without us choosing okay which is i want you to make a list of all the beliefs that you currently have about money this is neither negative nor positive it's actually it takes a lot of courage to be able to like share uh, sometimes you know the thoughts that are kind of disturbing us and that is just sitting deep inside and sometimes when you kind of just put them out there uh, you know it, it takes courage to do that and once you even say it out uh, you can kind of begin the process of letting go of such things hopefully through today's presentation uh, i'll be able to shift some of your money mindset money you know thought patterns so first of all uh, the very first thing that i want to talk about is why financial abundance is the foundation of spirituality all right what do i mean by this so the very first thing that i want you to understand is that spirit and matter are not separate they are the same like everything around you is spirit manifest you are spirit manifest the house you live in is spirit manifest the car you drive is spirit manifest the clothes you wear are spirit manifest like the dogs the cats the forest the jungles the ocean the planet the solar system everything is a manifestation of spirit at its core i would say there is one formless substance which is manifested as everything that you see and also as things that you cannot see this formless substance has many different names it doesn't necessarily matter what name you choose to give it some people call it god some people call it universe some people call it consciousness uh, they're just different words for the same thing so whatever word you choose that is fine you know it doesn't really matter but the principle is something that really matters and the principle is that everything that you can see touch taste feel you know interact with is a manifestation of this one formless substance so you see from my point of view when i'm saying that there is one formless substance uh the word i personally prefer to use is consciousness okay so consciousness itself has no form like none of you are interacting with like you know you're not able to touch consciousness you're not able to you know feel consciousness you cannot eat it you cannot hold it you cannot do anything with it yet consciousness is the most fundamental aspect of your life once you understand this that the fundamental base layer of your life is consciousness you will also start to realize that it is the very same consciousness that is experiencing all of existence also from other points of view what does this concept have to do with wealth and money and finance well i would say everything okay which is that once you understand that at the base what you really are is consciousness let us understand what does consciousness actually desire to have and what you will realize is that the core desire of consciousness is experience like because consciousness is infinite in its nature and it is able to create and manifest infinite dimensions consciousness is not just creating a dimension it is also then experiencing that reality through different filters like it and it likes to have all of these possibilities you know all these experiences now once you understand the base 
desire that consciousness has the way it relates to money and finance is that the same consciousness is operating inside you now let's understand what does it mean to actually live a complete and successful life well in order to live a complete and successful life you must fundamentally live really well in these three dimensions like you must live really well in your body you must re live really well in your mind and you must live really well in your soul the next thing that i want you to consider is that the objective of all life is development like every form of life on this planet wants to develop and it wants to live more it wants to live all the life that it is capable of living like if we had unicellular creatures the way they went from being single celled organisms to multi celled organisms is when they had too much life that could not be contained within one cell they started collaborating and started creating structures of multicellular creatures and this process of expansion of life of development of life has been happening on this planet for billions and billions of years you and me are also a result of this very same process and principle so today we must understand these principles at its depth okay now for a moment i want you to do a thought experiment okay stop looking at yourself as a human being and think about yourself from a planetary perspective just drop all of that and just imagine from the planet's point of view now from that point of view when you look at the human species what do you see so first of all let's just observe a couple of things okay the first thing i would say is as a species we are a very very successful species if you look at it dispassionately so there's all of these things you know it's like and there's all this trade that is happening between all these countries and even though at a superficial level like you know if you turn on the news everyone will tell you that you know oh, this country hates that country and they're going to war with this country they're going to bomb them they're going to do this that all those things but at the deeper level what you see is that even the countries that apparently hate each others are doing billions and billions of dollars in trade with each others and trade is nothing but another form of collaboration where we are able to exchange value and service with each others the, the single biggest contributor to this evolutionary leap is money well actually you see currently money actually has no value it's just it's a imaginary piece of paper you know it's not even paper anymore we are all doing like g pay phone pay transactions but what it has is it has a shared imagination and what this imagination is able to do is we are able to share this imagination with each others and collaborate the purpose of telling you all of this is to help you create a fundamental shift in the way you see money okay from this point on i want you to see money as a facilitator as a enabler that has vastly helped our species advance but over here now our life is so good you can travel anywhere and then get anything that you want and money is facilitating this process and so we have already come a long way okay that's the first thing to understand and so once you understand that from this day onward i want all of you to commit to me that you can have only gratitude for money how money has helped us you know in the evolution of our species in our ability to collaborate in scale now on that note once you realize and once you have had this shift in perspective that how much of a role money has played in 
the evolution of our species, how we have progressed from where we were to where we have come till now. Now comes the part of your role, which is while you are here on this planet, you are not free from duty. Now, what do I mean? You are not independent from the planet. You are not separate from the planet. We are living on planet Earth. So as being a part of planet Earth, whatever planetary evolution has to happen, we need to play our part. The planet would really prefer if you gave your 100%, if you contributed your highest potential to the planet. When we do everything in our capacity to take care of our planet, the planet will also do everything in its capacity to take care of us. So when we commit to providing our highest to the planetary system, then the planet naturally starts to take care of us and nourish us. But when we do the opposite, then it is in the planet's best interest to kind of phase us out. So the next thing that I want you to understand in terms of your life is that you should not be satisfied with a little if you are capable of using and enjoying more. Okay. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, see, it is not uh, see, I don't mean that, you know, you have to feed your ego. That is not what I mean by this. It's not about getting that fancy car and, you know, status symbols and things like that. Like if you are genuinely capable of enjoying persimmons, if you are genuinely capable of enjoying, you know, certain kind of food, then you should have that food. Like why would you not want to maximize your wealth? Because imagine if every rupee, every penny that you make is a representation of greater value to somebody's life. And that somebody is not somebody, but it's just consciousness. Like every, like everything that you're doing is service that you're rendering to the whole. And if that is how you make money, if that is how you get rich, then naturally you would want to have as much money as possible because the more money you make, the more lives you have touched, the more people who have benefited. The highest service that you can render to God or humanity is to make the most of yourself. And as we discussed in the beginning, in order to make the most of yourself, you must have abundance of wealth. It means that, you know, if you can be the most articulate version of yourself, if you can be the most well-read version of yourself, if you can be the most friendly, gregarious, loving, giving version of yourself, if you are the version of yourself that is connected to a very beautiful team that is able to work and collaborate with people in very effective ways. If you are the version of yourself that is able to dream the highest dream that you're capable of dreaming. Imagine what that version is capable of doing on this planet. 